Hello, my name's Anne Labar and I'm the Vicar of Seal Church and I've got a story today for the children of Seal School and anyone else who'd like to listen. But before I tell you the story, I'm going to light our candle. There we are. Now this story I'm going to tell you today is a very, very, very old story. It comes from the Old Testament, the first part of the Bible, from the book of Exodus, a long, long time before Jesus was born. And he was born a long, long time ago. So this is a very old story. And it's a story that came into my mind because Mothering Sunday is just around the corner. And this is a story about a mother. Or perhaps it's a story about a lot of mothers. You wait and see what you think about it. At the time of this story, the people of Israel, the Israelites, were in a lot of trouble. Many years before, they'd lived in their own land of Israel, but there'd been a famine. The crops hadn't grown properly, there was no food. And so they'd left their land and they'd gone to the land of Egypt and they'd asked for help there. They were refugees. The people of Egypt had welcomed them at first, but as the years passed and the decades passed and the centuries passed, the people of Egypt started to think, well, there are an awful lot of Israelites and they're very strong. And the Pharaoh, the ruler of Egypt, he looked at all these Israelites and he thought, what happens if they were to rebel against me? if they were to try and take control. Hmm, can't have that. So he had an idea. He made them all slaves so that they had to work for no money. They had to work long, hard hours and they had no freedom to do what they wanted or go where they wanted. But still, the people of Israel were strong. And so Pharaoh had another idea a dreadful, cruel idea. This is a sad and frightening part of the story. Pharaoh decided that all the Israelite baby boys, when they were born, were to be thrown into the River Nile. That way they couldn't grow up to fight against him. The midwives who delivered the babies and helped the mothers when they were born, they tried to protect them, but they couldn't. And it was in the middle of all of this that one Israelite mother gave birth to a child. And her baby was beautiful and strong and healthy, but it was a boy. And she looked at her child and she felt so much love for him, but so much fear as well. She didn't want anything to happen to him. At first, she tried to hide the baby but you can't hide a baby for long. And soon she knew she'd have to come up with another plan. So she thought long and hard. And then she, she had an idea. She went down to the riverside herself and she gathered up lots of the rushes, the reeds that grew there with long leaves like giant grass. And she took those long leaves and she wove them together in and out, in and out, very carefully, until she'd made a basket with a lid. And it was about so long and about so wide and about so deep, just big enough for a baby. And then when she'd woven it out of the, the grasses, the reeds, she found some sticky tar and she put it all over the outside and underneath to make it waterproof. And then she went back down to the river carrying the basket and her baby. And she put the basket in the river and it floated. And then she put the baby in the basket and it still floated and lulled on the, the waters, the baby fell asleep. And she put the lid on the basket and then she went home. She hoped he would be all right. He wasn't her only child though, because she already had a little girl, his big sister. 
and she was called Miriam. She wasn't full grown, but she was much bigger than that baby. And Miriam went with her mother when she put the baby in the water. And Miriam thought, I'll stay and I'll keep watch. I'll see if I can look after my baby brother. And so she hid herself in amongst the reeds and she watched from a little way off. She didn't have to wait very long because there coming along the riverbank, she saw, well, not just anyone, but a really important person. It was the Pharaoh's own daughter, the princess with all her servants. And she came walking along the riverbank. She was going to bathe. And as she walked along, she suddenly noticed that there was a basket in the reeds at the river's edge. Whatever's that, she thought. She sent one of her servants to fetch it out. And the servant brought the basket out and laid it down on the floor in front of the Pharaoh's daughter. And the Pharaoh's daughter lifted up the lid and there inside was a baby. And of course, with all that disturbance, the baby woke up and started to cry. Oh dear, thought Pharaoh's daughter, this must be one of the Israelite children. She knew what her father had done. She knew about the order that he'd given and she didn't like it. What can we do to help this child, she thought. Ah, <sighs> She didn't know because the child was, was too young to eat ordinary food. She just couldn't take it home and feed it on the food that she had. The child needed a mother's milk. Well, Miriam, the child's big sister, of course, was watching all of this and listening. And she took her courage in both hands and she stepped out of her hiding place and she went to Pharaoh's daughter and she stood in front of her and she said, excuse me, I wonder, I wonder whether that baby might need to have a mother to feed it, someone who can feed it on mother's milk. Well, yes, said Pharaoh's daughter. Do you know of anyone? Well, I could go and ask if one of the Israelite mothers could come and feed the child for you. Would you like that? And Pharaoh's daughter said, Yes, what a good idea. So that's what Miriam did. She went straight home and got her own mother, that baby's mother, but she didn't say who she was, of course, and brought her mother back to Pharaoh's daughter. And Pharaoh's daughter said to the woman, would you be happy to feed this child for me until he's grown up a bit, until he can eat ordinary food, and then when, he, when he's grown, you can bring him back to the palace and then he can grow up as my child. He can grow up in the palace with me. Would you do that? I'll pay you, of course. And so Miriam's mother, who was that child's mother, but nobody said that, she said, well, yes, of course, I will feed this child for you and I will bring him to the palace when it's time to do that when he's a little bit bigger. And so Pharaoh's daughter paid her some money and she went home with her own child, but nobody said that. And she fed him and she looked after him until he'd grown big enough that he could be left with Pharaoh's daughter. And then she took him to the palace and that's where he grew up. And Pharaoh's daughter said, I think we'll name this child Moses. Because in the Egyptian language, Moses means I have taken him out of the water. And so Moses grew up and in time, Moses turned out to be a really important man. Because when he was grown, he saw what was happening to his people, the Israelites, and he heard God calling him to set them free, to lead them out of being slaves to freedom in their own land and that's what he did but that's another story perhaps I'll tell you that story in another video for now though Moses was safe looked after by his own mother and like I said it seemed to me that Moses didn't just have one mum 
he actually had lots of people who mothered him and cared for him. As well as his own mum, there was Miriam, his big sister, who protected him and cared for him. And then there was Pharaoh's daughter. And you know, I think she knew all along whose child that was, but she didn't say. And then there were all her servants. I think they probably knew what was going on too. They didn't say either. All of them worked together to look after Moses and to make sure he was safe. And on Mothering Sunday, Mothering Sunday isn't just about giving thanks for our own mothers who gave birth to us. It's about giving thanks to everyone who cares for us, whoever they are, whether they're women or men, whether they're our own family or whether it's other people caring for us. That's what Mothering Sunday is for. Give thanks for those people and to remember that perhaps all of us can be mothers too and care for others, whether we have our own children or not. So that's today's story. I wonder what you thought of it. Perhaps you could talk about it to the people you're with. I wonder what was the best bit of the story. I wonder if any bits of the story worried you or frightened you. I wonder what you think about all those mothers that helped Moses. Now it's time for us to blow out the candle. So you know the drill by now, I'm sure. You're going to help me. I'm going to count to three and then we'll blow. Here we go. One, two, three, blow. <sighs> Bye for now.